Typhoon Pulasan, the 14th of the year, made landfall again in Shanghai's Fengxian district on the evening of September 19th. It seemed like a weaker storm, but the rainfall that came with it was astonishing. After a night of heavy rain, roads turned into rivers. Cars driving on the streets looked more like boats sailing through water. Several districts in Shanghai were flooded, making travel difficult and creating safety hazards. The heavy rain brought by Typhoon Pulasan mostly affected Fengxian District, Pudong New Area, and Minghang District. In Pudong and Fengxian, the total rainfall in just six hours exceeded 300 millimeters, breaking historical records. There was also lightning, strong winds, and other severe weather conditions. Shanghai's rainstorm warnings were continuously upgraded. The Central Weather Station first issued a yellow rainstorm warning at 6 a.m. on September 20th, then upgraded it to an orange warning around 8 a.m. Before that, both Pudong and Fengxian had already issued red warnings, indicating that the rain had turned into a disastrous event. As a result, 334 schools across 21 towns in these areas were closed, affecting 280,000 students. After the storm, many parts of Shanghai experienced flooding. Areas like Pudong Lingang and the Hunan Metro Station in Pudong New Area were heavily flooded. Delivery workers, cleaners, and other essential workers braved knee-deep water to keep working. Some cars were stranded in muddy water, forcing drivers to abandon them. We're sailing. We're sailing. Having a car in Shanghai isn't enough. You need a boat too. Oh no, the car won't start. It's already stalled. Two cars have already broken down. After Typhoon Pulasan made landfall, the streets of Shanghai turned into a vast expanse of water. A woman fell into the water after stepping into a hole. One resident's electric scooter broke down in the rain. Oh man, it's like the sky is falling. This is my scooter. What a typhoon! Shanghai is flooded. This is at the intersection of Sichuan Road and Guangdong Road. Everything's underwater. I've lived this long, and it's like the first time I've seen Shanghai flooded like this. It's completely flooded at Wanda and Nancheng, Shanghai. Cars, scooters, nothing can move. Tianpeng Street in Sichuan Town looks like an ocean. The water has receded a bit now. The second typhoon might have caused even more damage. The first one was mostly wind. The rain wasn't that bad, but this time the rain is so intense. It hasn't stopped at all. The downpour has been too much to drain. Where can the water go? The front of Julu Plaza has turned into a mini swimming pool. It's unbelievable. According to videos posted online, the Hunan Metro Station area in Pudong New Area was heavily flooded, with water reaching about knee height, making it difficult for pedestrians and vehicles to pass through. In my city, Wangshan Town in Pudong New Area, Shanghai, we've had a night of heavy rain, and now there's severe urban flooding. Houses, cars, everything is submerged. The water on the streets is over 30 centimeters deep. This is a huge loss. All the appliances are soaked in water. And we can't even open the doors. Take a look. This is the street, and you can see all the cars are just sitting in the water. The road to Pudong Airport is completely destroyed. The police have blocked off the road, and no one is allowed to go to the airport. The Shanghai Swimming Stadium is flooded, and so is the entrance to the nearby metro station. Look at this. The house in Fengshan District is completely flooded. Here at Longyao Road in Shanghai, the water is so deep. Look, everything is flooded. Even the cars are sinking. Don't come here, guys. Homes are completely flooded. Shanghai Ocean University High School is also underwater, turning the campus into a vast lake. 大家看啊。Look, this is Kanzhong Road in Sichuan Town, Fengxian District. For so many years, every time there's a heavy rain, it's like this. Many residents have reported this issue to the town multiple times, but nothing has been done to solve it. Now, because of the typhoon, businesses and factories are suffering major losses again. I really don't know what the officials are thinking. In the video, streets are flooded, and in the deeper parts, the water reaches a man's chest. Someone struggles to ride a scooter, while several women carefully wade through the waist-deep water, inching forward step by step. On Guoding Road in Yangpu District, the flooding was serious. Around noon, heavy rain turned into a massive downpour, and within just over an hour, water levels reached more than 60 centimeters. 
The rain in Pudong and Yangpu is so heavy. In Yangpu, this road got flooded. I was halfway down the road when I saw several cars submerged, and I got so scared I turned around and ran. The video shows severe flooding at the Hunan Metro Station in Pudong New Area, with water reaching knee level, making it hard for both pedestrians and vehicles to get through. Some parts of Shihui District also experienced flooding. This downpour has caused a lot of inconvenience for residents. Many people commented online saying, "Woke up to a torrential downpour and still have to go to work." Some commuters mentioned there were very few people on the subway. Others shared, "I walked through water to get to work, completely soaked. Even rain boots and shorts didn't help." Some said the rain was so heavy it felt like a waterfall was pouring down. Another mentioned, "My kid was happy to get a school closure notice, but adults still have to go to work." On the morning of September 20th, a netizen posted that Typhoon Pulasan caused the Huangpu River to overflow, sharing a video showing the river spilling over the embankment. Mr. Jiang, who lives in Pudong New Area, said that he listened to the sound of wind and rain all night. At 7:30 a.m. on the 20th, as soon as he drove his car out of the underground garage, the heavy rain immediately covered the windshield. He had to set the wipers to the fastest speed and keep the car's speed around 50 kilometers per hour. Driving from the expo area to Luziadre, he noticed that some parts of the road were deeply flooded. He said, "It felt like I was sailing a boat." As he occasionally saw overturned traffic cones lying in the road, on the lane closest to the non-motorized vehicle lane, when a car sped up, the water that splashed nearly flew over the heads of people riding electric scooters. The heavy rain caused numerous traffic jams. Ms. Gu, who lives in Yangpu District, said she left home at M on the 20th. Usually, it only takes her 10 minutes to drive her daughter to school, but due to the rain, there was serious congestion on the roads. It took her more than half an hour to reach the school. In the past week, two typhoons, Babinga and Pulasan, have successively made landfall in Shanghai. Two typhoons hitting the city within four days is unprecedented. Both storms have caused significant damage to the Shanghai area. Typhoon Babinka brought fierce winds and heavy rain, which peeled off the exterior walls of tall buildings, blew out windows, tore off rooftops, and swept away many billboards. In addition, many large trees were uprooted, with falling trees crushing a large number of cars. The broken branches and equipment malfunctions may lead to secondary damages. A seaside park in Pudong was at the core of Typhoon Pulasan's Level 7 wind zone. Late at night on September 19th, the area was hit with strong wind and rain, along with thunder and lightning. To ensure the safety of the seawall, it was completely sealed off. Residents of Shanghai have voiced their frustrations, complaining about flooded streets and neighborhoods, questioning why property management fees are collected but no maintenance is done. It rained all night in Shanghai, and this is what it looks like outside our community. The water can't even drain out of the area. Anyone who's awake, come out quickly. Your cars are going to be flooded. The water is almost up to knee level. Look at this, everyone. This is our neighborhood. The water has turned into a disaster. What kind of property management is this? They collect fees every day, but look at this. The water is just sitting there. What kind of management are we paying for? The rain in Shanghai is really intense. The whole street has turned into a river. Look at the underground garage at Hongfei Shiyuan. It's completely full of water. Not a single person from property management has come to check. It's been days since the typhoon, and no one has done any flood prevention work. They're quick to collect fees, always asking for money. But when it comes to work, they're nowhere to be found. This tree has been knocked over for days, crushing several cars, and no one has come to deal with it. Residents of Hongfei Shiyuan in Pudong are questioning why the underground garage has been flooded and why the property management hasn't done proper flood prevention work. Parts of the neighborhood's foundation have already collapsed, and with the continuous rain, residents are concerned that it might worsen and affect the building's foundation, posing safety risks. Large areas of Shanghai are flooded, with many roads completely submerged. Numerous schools have canceled classes, factories have suspended operations, and the severe flooding is putting the city to the test. This night of heavy rain has revealed significant engineering issues, with the drainage system proving inadequate. Shanghai residents believe that every time it rains heavily, many cars end up submerged in water. 
Some have commented that Shanghai's drainage system can only handle up to 36 millimeters of rain per hour, designed for a once-in-a-year storm. This standard is barely sufficient for short bursts of heavy rain, let alone the sustained downpours brought by typhoons. To better protect the city from typhoons, Shanghai should learn from cities overseas and upgrade its drainage standards as soon as possible. This disaster highlights the outdated urban drainage systems in Chinese cities and the fragile state of urban ecosystems. Chinese socio-economic scholar He Qinglian once criticized the Chinese government for focusing on flashy projects while neglecting essential infrastructure. She remarked that sewers have been relegated to a low-priority position in modern Chinese city planning, a reflection of the political culture that prioritizes vanity projects. In the past two decades, China has undergone rapid urban expansion, with public projects becoming a hotbed for government officials seeking personal gain. Poorly constructed roads, bridges, and other buildings are commonplace. Yet the weakest link in China's urban ecosystem remains its outdated sewer systems. Every time a storm hits, many cities turn into lakes. When this happens, Chinese authorities often shift the blame to nature, describing it as a once-in-a-century or once-in-decades event. Although urban ecosystems may seem far removed from politics, the vulnerability of China's urban infrastructure reflects the government's tendency to prioritize grandiosity over citizens' welfare. Typhoon Pulasan brought a surreal day to Shanghai on September 20th, with bizarre weather changes, including heavy rain, thunderstorms, and even a suspected tornado. In the afternoon, multiple netizens captured videos of a sky covered in dark clouds and what appeared to be a tornado. By evening, the sky turned a strange purplish-pink hue. At 3 p.m., a netizen in the Qingpu district posted a video claiming to have filmed a tornado near Wanda Plaza. The footage showed thick black clouds in the sky and a dark tornado swirling debris into the air. The tornado seemed to pass through a residential area. However, Shanghai's official reports insisted that there were no casualties or building collapses. A weather blogger also confirmed the tornado, pointing out that the funnel cloud structure was clear and there were debris clouds near the ground, confirming it as a typical tornado. The blogger also reminded people commuting home to bring rain gear and stay safe. According to the Shanghai Meteorological Bureau, several thunderstorms were affecting the area, and an emergency orange wind warning was issued in Baoshan District. In the early hours of September 20th, the center of Typhoon Pulasan had moved from Shanghai into Qinshan, Jiangsu Province, and by 5 a.m. it had entered Jiangyin in Jiangsu Province. However, by the afternoon, the typhoon made a sharp turn in Jiangsu, heading northeast, bringing its rain clouds back over Shanghai once again. This extreme weather in Shanghai has sparked many reactions online. Netizens commented, "This is something I've never seen before." It's been a long time since we've heard of a tornado in Shanghai. Others said, "Wow, this year has had way too many extreme weather events." Some netizens also shared their personal experiences, such as one user who said, "Our flight to Pudong was already on the shuttle bus, but we were told the flight was delayed due to the heavy rain." Since September, several typhoons have hit mainland China. With many calling it a typhoon hotspot, Typhoon Yagi, the 11th of the year, made landfall in Wenchang, Hainan, on September 6th, causing damage to nearly 530,000 people and resulting in 100 casualties. Typhoon Babinka, the 13th typhoon, hit Shanghai at its peak intensity on September 16th, before moving through Jiangsu, Anhui, and Henan. Now, Typhoon Pulasan has battered both Zhejiang and Shanghai. 
and another typhoon, the 15th of the year, has already formed and is expected to bring heavy rainfall to the southern coastal areas and Hainan in the coming days.